Lenten verse. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 13. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God, and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, he took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. The hymn of the day on page 6 is 717, verses 1, 2, and 3. You may be seated.
reservation at a, your favorite restaurant, it's a very important event. And because you did it online, there's always a chance it's going to be a glitch. So you get there and they're not ready for you at all or don't have your reservation. So you wait, wait, wait. Your table isn't ready. After finally being seated, the hostess says, someone will be right with you. Dying of thirst just for a glass of ice water, 10 minutes. You're being ignored by the staff. Tw 12 minutes, you excuse yourself from the table. And you get up and try to find someone so you'll get some customer service. Oh yes, yeah, someone will be right with you. Well, that's what you said about almost 15, 20 minutes ago. No service at all. You sit back down and still nothing, and I highly doubt that any one of you would go into the kitchen and grab a, uh, an apron uh, made for um, a waiter or waitress, or maybe even a white chef's apron, and then go out and start asking all the other customers, is there anything I can do to serve you? I would like to serve you. Here, I'll bring you ice water. You go to your party, ice water, here's a salad. So you're doing this, and the restaurant um, proprietors say you, you have to leave. You're, you're breaking Illinois health code, code, code laws. But I needed to serve. And that, that would be an, an outstanding thing an outstanding thing to see. And, and I'm sure somewhere in this earth, in a restaurant, near a bar, something like this probably has happened. Fine, I will serve others because no one is serving us. Well, I know we wouldn't do that, put on the uh, apron, start serving the customers, we would just leave. And yet, that's sort of what Jesus did. He, he, he took off his, his outer um, cloak and, and he put on the servant's um, apron and a towel around his waist and found a basin of water used for washing the disciples' feet and his own feet. Not a common practice in the United States, but in the Western Orient where Jesus lived, especially before a major meal with other people, the washing of feet was both necessary and a polite practice. And that assignment was given to the little kid at, at his or her first job or to the servant of the servant, to the servant's servant, and for obvious reasons. Because they ate from couches, the table was only about a foot tall, kind of like if they eat in Japan, and, and the, you kind of lie down, and, and your feet are close to the table. So the, the feet needed to be washed, and Jesus began doing this. Now, this washing of the disciples' feet is one of Christ the King's, in my long history here, favorite readings. It happens to us once every three years. The other two years of Holy Thursday are about the institution of communion, which is also a service to us, a great service that we, of course, still practice. But this washing of disciples' feet, it, it just strikes us as extremely loving and, and, and humble of Jesus Christ and motivates us to serve each other in high ways, medium ways, or low ways. To find joy in servanthood. Now Jesus did this not because he was complaining about 
the poor customer service in the upper room of Jerusalem at the Passover feast. Not that he was trying to shame us. When I say us, I mean disciples. His disciples, that's not why he did it. Well, none of you will do it. I guess I have to. Kind of what I say when the dishes start piling up to the moon and at our house and, and you know, and do it. Well, I should have done it in the first place, but that's not why he was doing it to shame anyone, but as teacher and Lord to show them the extent of being a Christian and the extent of his love for the world, stinky feet and all. As St. John records, having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. Okay, so it was about love. Now, love isn't compulsory. Love isn't used to shame people. Love isn't used to make you guilty. Love is to make you glad, to make you have, to give you something, expecting nothing in return. And that's why Jesus did it. Of course, St. Peter um, objected, as he had in the past, never, Lord, shall you go to the cross, never, Lord, shall you fall into the hands of the Romans, never, Lord, um, shall you be arrested and beaten. And now Jesus comes to Peter, kind of the, the spokesperson of the disciples, and Peter says, no, Lord, I will not allow you to wash my feet. Jesus replied patiently, you don't realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand about love and service without cost. After I've given my all for you and rose from the dead, from the tree of the cross, and called you to follow me. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Unless I wash you, Jesus replied, you have no part with me. Boy, that stings a little bit. Well then, Lord, wash my head and my feet and my whole body. Jesus said, no, Peter, I'm not, you know, this isn't bath time. It's, he said, you're already clean. Jesus was thinking of Peter's baptism in the River Jordan. Jesus was thinking of how many times he had forgiven Simon Peter and his disciples for their failures and encouraged them for their good works. Jesus said, you're already clean. He's talking about the soul. Although not every one of you is clean. He said this because he knew that Judas Iscariot had sold him out for 30 pieces of silver, a handsome sum, but not nearly enough to betray our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is it? So Jesus washes Peter's feet. Maybe the next person was Judas Iscariot. What do you think he did? He washed Judas' feet. He loved Judas. He loved them all. But Judas had already betrayed him, and the devil had entered his heart at that time. We see that Jesus serving human beings is not based on our behavior or opinions. Do you understand that? Not based on our behavior or opinions. If it were, then he would not have washed Judas' feet. Then he, then he would not have washed Peter's feet, who denied knowing him three times later that night, and who said, never, Lord, should he go to the cross. He would have never got to the cross if he based his serving, his humble service, on our behavior and opinions. He 
he's compelled by love to do it anyway, and he calls us the same. That he says, now as I, your master and your teacher, have washed your feet, you go do the same. And if we only wash the feet of those of whom we have current approval, we sin greatly. We are to serve and wash and be willing to wash everybody's feet, no matter their behavior or their opinion. And by that, I mean serving them with the law and gospel, with the love of God, with, with the hope of forgiveness, with the second chance, with charity and peace for all, and hatred toward no one. Not based on their behavior, but based on Christ's love in our lives. Jesus made another point here. Unless I wash you, you cannot be saved. It's because we cannot save ourselves, much less other people, but we can lead them to our Lord out of our life of service. Now, I'll serve myself is prevalent in our country, which, which makes Christian evangelism very difficult in this country. I'll serve myself. And sometimes that might be fine at the gas pump, at the kitchen stove, at, this will never come back, a salad bar at the restaurant. I'll serve myself, but we can't always have that prevalent attitude lest we be damned. Christ himself, God, must serve us so we can be saved. That's what Jesus was saying here. He must serve us with the forgiveness of sins, with, with his holy word, with the law and gospel, with the gift of faith, with the eternal life and salvation. He has to wash us. He has to make us clean. Wash me and I shall be clean. Sanctify me and I shall be whiter than snow. All Christians of all time have believed this of our Lord. And then being served, we are then called to serve one another. And yet some people still refuse. They refuse your help. You tell them you're praying for them, they don't care. They refuse your foot washing, so to speak. For one reason or another, usually human pride, usually bad opinions, usually bad behavior. There's a saying that says, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make a drink. And that, ha that happens when we try to serve people and, and they, they, won't, they won't drink the water. They refuse the foot washing. They refuse the Lord. But remember these words, O oh, sinful mankind, on every continent. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet, period. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Love for sinners, that we might be saved. Jesus says, don't give up. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Blessing in service. High service, medium service, menial service. Do we understand? Foot washing is, is just an ancient custom of, of long ago. But not in humble service to one another beginning tonight. When we have a servant's heart, we are blessed. 
especially when we extend our bended knee in humble service, so to speak, of washing another person's feet. No wonder the Bible said just this past Sunday as we began Holy Week in this festive chapel, your attitude should be the same as that as Christ Jesus. And isn't that what Jesus told them? He said, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. So I have set you an example. St. Paul writes in Philippians, your attitude should be the same as that as Christ Jesus on that evening. Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant. St. Paul wasn't there. Certainly he heard about Jesus last night on the earth before his death that he washed the disciples' feet, made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. So helping other people out is an attitude granted by your Lord in the spirit of of Christian faith, which by nature is extremely humble and grateful. And Jesus says, I will bless you because of your humble heart and humble hands. The hands of the passion, Jesus' hands of humility, care for our every need, body, soul, and spirit. Therefore, bless our hands, O Lord, today, to tend to each other as best we can, as you have so served us. Thanks be to God for your washing hands of love. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the offertory is offered now, a musical and prayerful one. The offering plates for our gifts are in the entryway of our church. You may be seated. <clears throat> 